some time ago, uh, when um, one of my colleagues was responsible for this project, there was some discussion about the um, designation of lime fields as a site of biological importance. Uh, it, seemed, it seems that um, there are some issues uh, around that, and um, the, the designation at that time uh, was not made, but there have been subsequent discussions about that. Can I could just explain that a site of biological importance uh, does carry some weight within the planning process, but it doesn't actually carry significant weight. Um, so it's not like a site of special scientific interest. It meets that criteria as well. Please, Sorry. please, nobody interrupted when you were speaking, and I would like the same courtesy extended to whoever's speaking. So please. I know there's passion in the room, but please, thank you. And that goes to the hand waving as well, please. It's, I find it distracting. Carry on, David, thank you. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, so, a site of biological importance doesn't carry the, kit, the same significance as a site of special scientific interest. Now, in terms of um, our position on the designation, of the site of biological importance for lime fields. Um, from an officer perspective, we have no issue with that at all. Um, the area um, is um, sensitive um, from an environmental perspective. And throughout the whole of this project, we have worked on the basis that the project needs to address fully and satisfactorily all of the environmental issues that there are area. Now those can be done in a number of ways. Some can be done through the actual design of the golf course by the creation of the lakes on there and various habitats and so on. And some of the environmental um, issues can be dealt with um, by off-site measures, so in the adjacent fields and about and so on. And when um, I became responsible for this project, one of the first things uh, that we did uh, was I had a meeting with a number of the environmental groups involving the RSPB, uh, World Wildlife and others and we had a discussion about the project, about the sensitive environmental issues and we asked those groups to work alongside us to provide us with all the information that they had got because we only have part of the information and not got specialist information and we asked them if they would work alongside us to provide all of that information the environmental consultants who would be working for the developer um, so that they have the full body of information and knowledge on the particular area. And those groups said they were willing to work on that basis. I need to say that uh, I'm quite likely they didn't commit themselves to support the project or not to support the project. It's just a case of providing the knowledge that they've got so the developer's consultants can actually be aware of that in the community. Um, we then had a meeting with the developer and their consultants and we took them through all of the environmental considerations that we know about in relation to this site. We've also taken them through all of the council's planning policies, uh, some of which we referred to earlier and which we referred to obviously in all the reports we've been to about that. So they've got full knowledge of all of those things. So we treat the environmental side of this project with equal importance as any other part of the project because if it is to be successful all of those things need to come together. Now this uh, present developer developed a scheme down in McInnes in South Wales uh, where they have a range of similar environmental issues to the ones that you have here in Holloway and they successfully worked through all of those issues um, and provided a golf course as well. So they've got experience of doing these things. But I can assure members that we've already raised all of these issues. They're really important and whether you have it designated as an SBI or not, um, it doesn't affect the um, approach that we are taking to this project and the high environmental standards that we will want to see as part of the scheme. Nice one, Chair. Okay. I've circumvented it because given the answer.
answer that you gave to uh, Councillor Ellison before, in, in respect of any work to be
made investment in the project uh, to date. I mean, we have been negotiating the development agreement for um, well over 12 months in some very difficult negotiating um, circumstances now we have to get the best uh, position from the can for the council uh, in addition to enabling this project to move forward. Okay. So your second question. Why is the commitment reduced to 200? So as part of the uh, negotiations, um, we managed to get the Nicholas Joint Venture Group to agree to meet 50% of those costs subject to them receiving planning permission. Um, throughout the processes when you're dealing with projects of this nature, there are negotiations that go on. Um, at this moment in time, because the Nicholas Joint Venture Group haven't got um, the outcome of the funding liability plan, and obviously we don't know the outcome of any future planning, uh, we weren't able to negotiate um, a different arrangement, so uh, we had to negotiate a position where the council put um, its money there um, in like the front as part of the process, but we said if that process progresses, then we feel that they should pay 50% towards those costs, hence that's why we negotiated that position and structure
and the Secretary of State would then have two options. One, to call in that application and determine it in order herself, or they may decide not to call it in, in which case the Council Planning Committee can make the decision. So in what I've explained, sorry, it's a bit longer explanation than we're looking for, but I think throughout that process you can see how we deal with things and where the decision making actually lies. So hopefully that's an reassurance to members. Thank you, David. I'd just like to say we have a very professional planning department here in this council, and then there's a fair chance that this is going to be taken out of delegation, as David said, and then it's going to go to the planning committee. And I do think within this council we've got an excellent planning committee, um, right across the board, um, who make the decisions purely on planning grounds, as the planning department do, and will carry on to do that. Just as a matter of clarity. Anybody else? Jeffrey. Thank you, Chair. Um, the earlier witnesses referred to both the um, planning designation as green belt and also to the um, potential um, designation for, for, for nature reasons. We've covered the SBI, SSS part of the um, matter. Um, we've heard also earlier that. Sounds from all the services we've been told it's going to offer, it's going to be a very large hotel, not a very insignificant building which will fade easily into the Greenbelt. Um, Greenbelt policy talks about affecting the openness of the Greenbelt. Um, we've also been admitted that there's a need for enabling development, and I seem to recall at the outside of the out outset of this 12, 14 years ago, we were told. The 50 millionaires mansions, which made people sit up and think, oh, that'd be good for LA, wouldn't it? Now I think we're being told it's 100 executive homes and 50 retirement flats. How can this possibly fit into Greenbelt policy with a large hotel? Um, and, and, you know, why is it that, that, that we're even considering going further when even we're told that consultants in the past said it was unlikely to be? something changed. 